me, Irene Sanders. Good evening. Here are the x-ray photos that Professor Abel asked for you today. You look completely worn out there. Is anything wrong? The professor is driving you too hard. No. He's a genius, and it's really a pleasure to work with him. But he's beginning some experiments that, in my opinion, exceed a certain ethical limits. Why? What do you mean? Irene, you know me. You know that I'm not what you might call a very religious man. No, that's true. But now I'm starting to question certain things. Has any man the right to compel nature to surrender her closest secret? I can't answer. I'm very much confused. Walter, has the professor spoken to you yet? About what? About me. He examined me two weeks ago, and I wanted to know if... Oh, I'm sorry. I really don't know what's wrong with me these days. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. Well, he's very satisfied with his findings, and he's convinced an operation can be successful. But I'm worried, Irene. You know there are risks involved. I have full confidence in the professor. Walter, I'm so lucky. Oh, just to imagine, I'll be able to stand straight at last. And nobody's going to stare at me. On the contrary, I think that men are certainly going to look at you. Walter! Where are you? I need you. Mr. Professor, watch me. I will be able to see you soon. We'll talk about it then. Goodbye, Irene. Good night, Walter. Excuse me, nurse. I'm looking for the house of Professor Abel. That's it. Dr. Ood with a message from Professor Hartman. Hello, Dr. Ood. Good evening, Professor. May I present Dr. Burton, the assistant? He's a first-class surgeon and an excellent architect. It's he who designed this house. This is Bert Yeager, an engineer of genius. He designed and built my special operating table. It permits me to work without assistance. He's a little strange, the result of a brain operation. But he's a good and faithful collaborator and worthy of our confidence. We will live here together. <laughs> Where are you from, by the way? I can't even tell you, Professor. I was the only survivor of a shipwreck. Both of my parents died of a few months old. You have a very strange name. That was the name of the wrecked ship, SS Ood. Nah. Dr. Hartman has recommended you highly. Why do you wish to work with me? I uh, have followed your recent experiments with great interest, Professor, especially that in which you succeeded in removing the head from a dog's body and keeping it alive for four months. But the Russians performed that experiment months before I did. We plan to conduct a series of unprecedented experiments shortly on keeping human tissue alive after death. I'm particularly interested in the grafting of healthy organs to replace diseased ones. That is a field in which I'm extremely interested. Uh -huh. Well, then you're the man we're looking for. <laughs> this is my operating room. Everything you'll ever need here, electrocardiograph, electrocephalograph, and this, uh, this is my silent assistant which Bert built for me. That is my serum Z. With this serum, I'm able to keep an organ alive after separating it from its body. Fantastic, fantastic. That's absolutely sensational. Why have you kept this a secret, Professor? Oh, do you think it's so important? I'm not an ambitious man. What's important for me is the progress of science. Yes, that was used to support the dog's head. The 
Theoretically, one should be able to repeat the experiment with a man's head. Oh, but that's absurd. I would never have thought of such a thing, but... I said theoretically, Professor. Yes, you're perfectly right. Theoretically, it's possible. Thanks to the advances of modern surgery and my development of serum Z, it's possible to consider operations which would until recently have been considered unthinkable. <laughs> when can you move in with us, sir? Whenever you wish, Professor. Tomorrow. Good. Walter, leave us alone. Bert. Yes? What do you think of the new man? I don't know. But the professor needs him. Dr. Ood. Do forgive me, but I must call your attention to a most important fact. The professor has a weak heart. A very weak heart. I love him dearly. Any undue emotion might bring I'm my here for only one purpose to work. Good evening. You get a big kick out of taking your clothes off in front of those slobs, don't you? If you want to make me a better offer, go ahead. I'm sick of standing around shivering and playing the model for you. Nobody says you have to. I just don't like seeing you undressed in front of others. Uh-huh. You're jealous, plain jealous. If you don't like to do something about it. You could live like millionaires if you wanted. If your father, the great John Lerner would only make you work a little on your law examinations long enough to get your diploma. <laughs> you and your pictures. Who'd buy any of your pictures? I'll be quiet. You make me sick. <laughs> I make you sick, huh? Who needs you anyway? Miss Lily, on stage. Yes, I'm coming. Did I make you sick, huh? One minute to go, Miss Lily. Just wait. Thank <laughs> you.
one very dry martini from that lily. And a uh, whiskey for you, Paul. Come on, let's make up again. Oh, leave me alone. I disgust you, don't forget. We'll say a lot of things when we're mad. Another martini, please, Frank. Lily, don't drink so much. Another one, Frank, please. Don't be like that. Oh, stop it. Always the same old tricks. I'm sorry. Examine these two x-ray plates. Both patients are in serious condition. One photo was that of the spiral column of a young man, the other that of an old man's heart. Fracture of the vertebral column with partial rupture of the spinal cord. I see no hope for surgical intervention. Who is the man? Uh, an unidentified man. Tramp run down the highway. He hasn't long to live. Now you, Dr. Hood. Innovation of a heart possible rupture of the artery in a very short time. Incurable. We have one chance. Give this man here a new heart right away. For example, the heart of that man. Exactly. This operation will be performed. Yes, the photo on the left is of my own heart, gentlemen. But, Professor, I'm sorry to have to say so, but, but we can't possibly go that far. Ah. We shall go ahead with it. I haven't much time. Neither does he. Come over here. I've worked out exactly how we shall proceed. First phase. I'm afraid it's completely hopeless. I know, but we're going to try anyway. Is there anything the matter? No, I'll see you later, Irene. Goodbye. Yes, I did, Professor. Everything's all right. I'm good. Bert, listen carefully. Listen very carefully to what I say. We're attempting an operation that has never been done. It will be very complicated. You must do whatever Dr. Hood tells you to do. Do you understand? Even if what you do seems very strange. Promise me that. Yes, I promise, sir. Good, my boy. Gentlemen, shall we begin? Now exactly 9.47. We operate in 12 hours. Two hours from now, we shall examine the heart again. I'll do that. Dr. Ood! Dr. Ood! Come quickly! Dr. Ood! What are you doing? I'm going to cover the body. Why? Why? The operation is impossible now. I have told you that the man's already dead. What are you doing there? We'll operate anyway. What we... Are you out of your mind? We have one chance to save the professor's life. We can't waste time. We have to try. You mean giving the professor the dead man's heart? I won't let you do it. Get out! I'm going to call the morgue. Tell him to pick up the body. Put down that telephone. It's true. You really are insane. <laughs>
Disappeared. All these things are gone, too. I know. He left last night. He may not be back. We shall have to go ahead without him. Bert, we must save the professor's life. Careful. Stand on. Fast. Fast. Heart weakening. Respiration weakening. Respiration stop. Serum Z.
Be calm, Professor. Too much emotion can be extremely dangerous now. Do you hear me clearly now? Yeah. I'll give you the facts. The man whose heart we planned to use died before the operation. Dr. Burke lost his nerve and ran out on us. I attempted to take the heart of the dead man and to graft it in place of yours. But your body didn't survive the shock. That left me only one last chance. And that was to perform the dog operation on your head. And I succeeded. I have beaten death. You will live. What kind of a monster are you, Oog? You want a freak to show in the circuses? You're capable of it. Kill me. No, no, Professor, you will live. You're a great man, a scientist. Your brain made you great. The rest doesn't count. I've kept your brain alive. You will live. You will live. I've saved your brain for mankind, Professor. You're not human. You cannot make me do it. I refuse. I won't do it. Who gave permission to you for this operation? Did you ask the dog permission before you operated? A dog is not a human being. It's only for science. Oh, kill me, Ud. I don't want to go on living now. No. You think. And so you will live. Yes, perhaps you're right. I have no more strength left. I'm confused. I, I'm tired. Let me sleep. I must sleep. I shall increase the oxygen supply. Is he alive? Yes. You may see him. No, Dr. Burke's not here. Uh, hello? Who's speaking, please? No, Miss Sanders, we've had no news of him yet. Why are you worried? He's never done this before. Ted? Have the police been notified? Yes, of course. I've already called the police myself. The hospital, Santa Maria Street, yes. Very well. Police station, I wish to report a missing person. All right. Who's speaking, please? Dr. Ood. Dr. Walter Burke. Carl Street. 
one, around 40, six feet, a build slender. Particular signs? None. For two weeks. Good. We'll put out a search for him right away. For one second, please. Say, weren't you talking about a doctor just now? This is about a doctor who's disappeared. Been gone for two weeks. Might be the same man. Give him here. Hello, I'm Inspector Stern. Who's speaking? Dr. Oud. Another doctor. <laughs> no, I mean, we have another doctor here. Say, you might want to speak to him. Very well. I'll be there in a half hour. I said you might want to speak to him, Doc, but don't count on his speaking to you. He's got a very good reason. His head's been chopped off. Not a very pretty sight, huh? Looks like he might have got caught in a propeller. Huh. Doc, you must be used to this sort of thing. Yes. But that's not Dr. Burke. Dr. Burke is about 40 years old. That's the body of an old man. Do you recognize this? That's the only way we knew the man was a doctor. It's all we found on the body, nothing else. A medical school symbol. But I've never seen this ring. I'm sorry. allowed you to sleep several hours now. It's you again, old. It wasn't a dream. I need your impressions, everything you feel. It will help for additional research. Can't you leave me alone to die? Have you no heart? You're talking like an idiot, Abel. Concentrate hard now. You must tell me the formula for serum Z, you hear? I can't find it in your papers anywhere. I won't let you have it. It's here in my head. You will never know. Irene Sanders. Let me introduce myself, Dr. Oud, the new assistant to the professor. You, you've come because of your cousin. I'm very sorry, but we still had no word from him. Were you here when he left? Yes. During some recent experiments we were conducting with Professor Abel, Burke was always on the very point of a nervous breakdown, a crisis. Some days he would become particularly excited and... Uh, He'd speak for hours of scruples and conscience and uh, of God. He must have lost his nerve and simply decided to leave. It's possible. Yes, he's been talking a lot about his scruples lately, and yet... Oh, God, help me. Irene. Everything is all right. Dr. Burke told me about the problem you have, and Professor Abel shares my opinion. I perform such operations often and with success. I will operate. No. Don't no. be afraid of me, Irene. Irene, you want an operation, don't you? Just think a minute how wonderful it's going to be. When this lovely face of yours has a normal and beautiful young body to go with it. No. No.
You know what that man just said to me? Miss Lily, he said, you are so lovely. I could make you the greatest name in Europe if I wanted to. And he has some very interesting engagements for me. Yeah, I'll bet. What's he in? The white slave business? Looks like it. That's just exactly what you need. I suppose you think you're the only man for me. Another whiskey. Don't give it to her. Another whiskey, and never mind what he says. A whiskey, or I'm going to wreck this joint. Lily, stop it. You're drunk. <laughs> Be drunk. I never get drunk. Look at this. I can stand on one leg on a chair. Isn't that great? <laughs> Oh, sorry, mister, I didn't mean to. Don't mention it. See, he's got good manners, not like you. Dance with me? Sure, with pleasure. <laughs> Are you an undertaker? Why do you ask that? You hold me like I was dead. Is that better? Mm, much better. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. You would never think that I'm a professional dancer, would you? Yes, I do know. How? Because I know you, Stella. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Dr. Brad. No, please, Dr. Wood. Just as you are now, Lily. But I'd never recognize you. You're so changed. The gray hair and... Yes, my illness caused it. Blonde hair suits you very well. I recognize you right away. I suppose you'll turn me in now. Lily, you poisoned your husband. And as a result of an experiment, I have a man's life on my conscience. That makes us even, I think. You mean you're still doing those awful experiments? I'm now legally a doctor. And you're a striptease dancer, huh? I work this place close as I need the money, that's all. I'd better have a drink. One martini for Miss Lily. Make it a double, Frank. Will you? I must go now, Lily. But I'll be back. Concentrate hard now. Can you recall all the details of Nurse Sanders' illness? The vertebral column. Correct. I have studied all aspects of her case, and an operation now will be entirely successful. And a brilliant idea has occurred to me. How do you plan to proceed? I will give her a perfectly formed body, a new body. Are you insane? So you have made one monster already, haven't you done enough? I will perform the operation which you had planned. I want to operate on Irene tomorrow. But unfortunately, she refuses to allow me to touch her. I need your help. You must speak to her. No, no, I don't want to be seen like this. You must have pity. You can't do it. She doesn't have to see you. She need only hear your voice. Tell her you're very busy and that she can trust me. My will, if you give me your word of honor, you'll try no experiments of any kind on her. You need have nothing to fear. Your cousin has written to us. May I please see the letter? I've given it to Professor Abel, but I've read it. It was mailed from somewhere in Austria. Unfortunately, he didn't give his exact address, but we now know that he's safe. He expects to return within a few weeks. Did he say anything about me? Yes. He asked Professor Abel to operate as quickly as possible. But I don't understand. He was against the operation the last time we spoke. Certainly. But I'm sure he's thought the matter over again because the professor says he now agrees. Can I talk to the professor? Mm-hmm.
Professor Abel, Irene Sanders wishes to speak with you, please. Irene. Good evening, Professor. Irene, I cannot see you now. If you agree to the operation that can be performed tonight, I have to leave soon on a long trip. You can arrange the details with Dr. Hood. Oh, but so soon? Professor Abel drew up a precise plan. Just say the word, I mean, and I shall begin preparations at once. But I must tell my landlady and let the hospital know and... You can leave all that to me and Bert. Go and rest a while now. Bert's fixed your room. We'll perform the operation in a few hours. There's just nobody in the place who wants his portrait done. Maybe the boss would like one. Oh, tomorrow I'll find some rich banker who wants me to design a tombstone for his wife. Oh, that's always the way. It's an ill wind that blows nobody no good. Very good, Lily. You really are a born philosopher. Who cares about philosophy? What is it that's troubling you? You're drinking entirely too much. Lately you've changed completely. Ah, it's such a rat race. This town and these men out there, I hate this lousy life. I'm sick of this place. Who's there? Are you finished with me? Why? Because I'm tired of this. You're also tired of me, perhaps. Yes, that's right. You mean I should leave you with this fellow, is that it? This is my dressing room. Now, get out of here. All right. But I pity you. What do you want with me? Leave me alone. Why did you come back? I'm afraid of you. Why afraid, Stella? Don't you still have me to thank for the operation which changed your face and saved your life? Have you forgotten? You've no reason to fear me. I suppose so. I don't know. It's just all my past seems suddenly pressing on me. And... Forget all that now. Come on, we'll have some fun. That's a real good idea. Yeah, let's have some fun. I want to dance and hear some music and meet some people and have laughs and... Stop. Don't move for a moment. Why? You still have a beautiful body. <laughs> Gosh almighty, there's a palace you got. I never thought that of you, darling. And this was all yours? It was all left to me, Lily. But material things don't interest me. It's living things that fascinate me. Uh-huh. Are you falling for me, honey? <laughs> now, why don't you get me a drink? So you inherited all this? Not quite. Nobody else here but you? Oh, not exactly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's the glass? Drink it and find out. It's not poisoned, I hope. That's not my specialty, is it? It's good. Now you can go to sleep. Yeah, but I'm not ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Is 
please send them. Will you come downstairs, please? Who's that, Doctor? A patient. She's a dancer. I gave her something to make her sleep. It won't take very long. She's a dancer. She has a fabulous body, doesn't she? Will you roll up your left sleeve, please? Don't be afraid, Irene. Just think of how it will be when you have a body like that girl's. I want you to follow this operation, Abel. I want to see the professor at once. Professor Abel's away now. How do you feel? Uh, well, I... I've... Uh, I've...
have a strange kind of feeling. Uh, as if my whole body were changed. Uh, as if my body didn't want to do as I wish. Uh, why must I wear this necklace? So the position of the spinal cord will not be disturbed. In a week or two, we'll remove it. Here, sit down. Cigarette tastes good, doesn't it? Oh, but I never smoked before. You'll find that many things will be changed in your life. This can't be true. Look at my hands. They're not like they were. There, the nail here. It was ripped off as a child. Now it's back there again. Irene, your whole body was transformed. It's not the same. Your glands were regenerated first. A hundred seventeen days you were kept in a state of hibernation. And while you were asleep, I changed numerous organs and successfully operated on your figure. My feet, they're so small now. My shoes will be too big for me. You have a lovely body, Irene. Give me my clothes back. Don't be foolish. We'll get you some new ones tomorrow. But I can't stay like this. Why can't you? Don't be afraid. The operation's over now. I've left no marks on your lovely body. You're so beautiful. No more hiding from people. Why run from everything you desire? You can't run away from yourself. You can come out. I'll leave you alone.
Oh, dear, wherever have you been? Why didn't you drop me a card at least? They called many, many times from the hospital to ask when you would be returning. I said I didn't know. Oh, I forgot some men called and said you were going to leave for a trip and would be gone for three months. I would have called the police then, but you know... Why, Irene, what happened? Why, it's a miracle. What happened to you, Miss Irene? Why, you're beautiful now. It's lovely. I was operated on. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful. Come to my room and tell me all about no, it. No, no. I'm terribly tired. I must get some rest. We'll talk Yes, yes, of course, my dear. Of course. Of course. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Excuse me. For half a second, I thought you were someone I knew, but... Is this your first time here? Yes. Actually, I'm looking for someone, a dancer whom I was told appears here. Which one is it? There are several. Lily. You're too late for Lily. She's been dead for three months. What? What happened to her? We don't know. She was found on the railroad tracks. Her corpse was mangled. Did you know Lily? I met her once a long time ago. It's amazing. How much you resemble Lily. You're the image of the girl. It's strange. Same figure, same dress. How well did you know her? She was my model for a while. I'm a sculptor. My name's Paul Lerner. Was she really pretty? Well, she did have a beautiful body. But she wasn't as lovely as you are. Oh, uh, whiskey, please. Uh, you better make that a coffee. Please. Care to dance? <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry, but I never learned how. Please, let's try it. Why, you dance beautifully. You must be a born dancer. It is curious. I wonder where it was we could have met. I've never seen your face before. But when I close my eyes and feel your body moving, I'm sure we've met before. You mean Lily? Yes. Do you have a picture of her? A few sketches and a bust I did. Why not come up to my place? I'll show you my work at the same time. And I'll make a sketch of you too. All right. I'd love to. Come in. I was afraid you wouldn't come. I promised, didn't I? Take off your coat. All of these are your works? Yes. Is that Lily? Yes. And who is that? It'll be you. I want you to model for me. I just want you to loosen your blouse and hold still a while. I want to do a head of you, may I? All right. Sit down over on the stool. That's curious. What? That beauty mark. What beauty mark? There, I've seen that same mark before, but on Lily's shoulder. Who is it? Irene. The night of my operation, there was a girl in here. What have you done with her? A girl? She was a patient under my care. I haven't seen her for some time now. A few hours later, her body was discovered, run over by a train. She was a dancer called Lily. And I'm sure she was murdered! Are you accusing me of having murdered her? Yes, I'm sure you killed her. I'm wearing her dress. I found it downstairs. And this is her handbag. <sighs> what was that operation you performed on me? You must have grafted her skin on my body. You have a poor imagination. 
But if you think you must have the truth at any cost, I'll tell you. I gave you not only the skin of another person, I gave you her entire body. No! No, that's impossible! Impossible, come with me! Don't touch me! You'll learn that everything is possible! Irene, don't look at me like this. For the success, I'm happy for you. You have a, a normal life now. So this body doesn't belong to me. Yes, it does. But I don't want to live now. You will live. You see, Abel, she's still ruled by her head. I'm wondering, though, if that lovely body will end up by demanding entirely too much of her spirit. Don't listen to old Irene. Go run away. And don't, don't ever come back. But before you go, I have a secret to tell you. Come here, no closer. Irene, pull out the wires. Please, Irene, get back. You'll go on living because I want you to. I can make serum Z without you. I analyzed the formula. saw you for the first time, the wonderful clarity of your face fascinated me. It was then that I decided to give you a new body. My operation on Professor Abel convinced me that maybe I could repeat the experiment on you, and so I did. You are my creation. Take it easy, Irene. Come on. Here, drink this. This will do you good. There's no one out there. 
Go on, lie down for a while. Paul, you must help me. I have no one else to turn to. I think I'm going out of my mind. Please, try to be calm. I mean, everything will be all right. There. Now, will you tell me what happened tonight? It's all so unreal. So incredible. I used to be a cripple. I was hunchbacked. I was. Ask the hospital where I worked or the old woman I'm living with now. It's true. You must believe me. I believe you, Irene. I was operated on, and that was three months ago. When the operation was over, I was afraid, and I hid in the cellar. Hid? Hid from whom? From Dr. Ood. He did my operation. And while I was hiding, I found this dress in this handbag of lilies in the cellar. I think Ood must have killed her. And, and this is her body. My head, Paul, on her body. But Irene, it's impossible. It can't be. You're imagining it. Yes, it's true. And it was my own body that they found on the railroad tracks. It must seem completely unbelievable to you, but everything I've told you is the truth. Today I went to see you and accused him to his face of having killed poor Lily, and he didn't even deny it. Then he forced me to go and look at it. The decapitated head of Professor Abel, and it was still alive. And you were speaking to me. Irene. Paul, did you hear him? Don't let him in, please. Who's there? I wish to see Irene, please. Go away, I'll call the police. He's gone now. I want to know about you. Why? Were you in love with her, Paul? Oh, I don't know. To say I loved her is maybe going too far. It could have been I loved her as an artist may have. As a beautiful form. Which is my past? Which is it? The past of Lily's body or that of my head, Paul? Paul, I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. Now you have a normal body. You can fall in love. You'll be like everyone else. You've no need to feel ashamed. Don't fight against it. Oh, Paul, you're so good. Your face is so lovely. Your eyes. Your mouth. Thank you. 
me, sir. Bert. Bert. Bert, where is Ood? Gone out. Bert, tear out the wires. Let me die. He killed Burke, and then he, he buried him out in the park. He's completely insane. You've got to act quickly. Come home. to me, do you? What a fool you are. Who is that man, anyway? You've told him everything, I heard you. <coughs> oh, but you needn't fear. <coughs> He'll soon be out of the way, too. I'm sick, yes. I'm sick. And you're the only one who knows it, but I don't care. You belong to me, me alone. Professor Hartman experimented on my brain. The results were fantastic. It made a genius of me. of my genius was madness. <laughs> my whole being became sick. That moon. And the wind. And that confounded dog. Three long months I didn't leave your side. For three months, I stood beside the operating table day and night. I fought against death, never stopping. Operation hour after hour. Thousands of blood vessels, nerves, glands, muscles. They all had to be treated and made to function as they did before. Two whole days and a half. Without stopping for a rest, I worked on you. I remade you. I recreated your body. You're not a prisoner. You can leave here if you want. You can leave, but you won't leave. You belong to me. To me. Do you recall one night about three and a half months back? I was here with Lily. You were here every night with Lily. Yeah, but remember one night when she left with a man with bushy eyebrows and scary eyes? Yeah, it comes back to me now. Uh, you bought the fellow a martini. Do you remember seeing him again? 
No, I don't think so. Hey, wait. You mean that guy? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, martini, please. Say, uh, does Miss Lily still appear here? Miss Lily? Haven't you heard the news? She was found dead more than three months ago. She was run over by a train. How awful. No, I'm afraid I hadn't heard. I was away. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Too bad about your friend, Lily. May I buy you something? A oh, whiskey. So you were away, huh? Just when did you come back, Doctor? I, uh, I've just gotten back. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your glass. Where's Irene? Who is Irene? Stop kidding. You know who I mean. The nurse Irene Sanders. What have you done with her? I don't know what you mean. You kidnapped her tonight from my studio. Spill it, mister. I said, tell me what you've done with her. I'm sorry. Would you mind telling me exactly what that means? I know that you killed Lily, too. I also know that you performed an operation on a Professor Abel before that. What's odd about a doctor's operating? He was decapitated by you! Oh, now, take it easy. You're just drunk. You murderer! Take your hands off of me, you dirty dog! You murderer! Stop! Let me go! Look out! Let me get out! Stop! Take your hands off of me! He's left, Professor. You're afraid of me. Just water. All right then, Mr. Uh, Lerner. I believe I know you. Haven't we met before? Yes, we met once. It was about the death of a strip teaser called Lily. I found out who it was who murdered her. Well, you don't say. And just who is the murderer, please? Dr. Wood. Dr. Wood? Place is full of doctors. Real butchers, these medics, huh? Yes, especially this one. Do you know what he did? The what? He decapitated Professor Abel. Decapitated? A Professor Abel. Somebody had already cut it off. What? The guy said we have the body here in the morgue. What? Now, now I'm completely confused. So am I. Anyway, who is this Dr. Rood? A monster completely insane. He murdered Lily. And last night, he kidnapped Miss Sanders from my studio. He set it afire. I'm sure he's holding her prisoner in his place. You've got to do something fast. That's Judge Lerner, sir. Is it true your father is Judge Lerner? Yes. Why the devil didn't you say so sooner? I have decided to leave here, Irene. I will destroy everything. I shall leave no clues behind. We leave early tomorrow morning.
Abel, I will be ruthless to any man who stands in my way. I have no choice. That was why Burke had to die. you show a single scientist who's working purely for humanity and not just to satisfy his own curiosity. Without curiosity, there can be neither science nor knowledge. But you, Dr. Ruth, you've abused your great gifts. You have a criminal brain. Sure, sure, sure. You can save that stuff for the others, Abel. I... <laughs> I'm not bound by their rules. No, I'm above all their laws. I'm disappointed in you. I had hoped that in taking your head from your body, maybe the cause of science would be served. that it would change your ideas. That was foolish. I have succeeded in achieving a scientific miracle, but now the experiment is finished. Now I'll let you die. You may do whatever you like, Dr. Booth. I'm beyond all harm now. Poor fool, you're mad. You're completely mad. I don't need a psychiatrist to tell me that. Be still! Shut up! Mad, yes. <laughs> you're mad. I am not mad! No! No! I am not mad! No, it's not true! No, it's not! <laughs> yes, mad. No! No, no, no! Irene. Where is this, Dr. Rude? I don't know. What's the matter, Irene? Nothing. Come on. It's no use. I'll never get away from him.
my reunion.